Hello, welcome back to my channel, Current Chapter. My name is Dani, and today we're going to talk about The Sand Keeper by Erica Bauermeister. So let's talk about books. The Sand Keeper was selected as a February book in the Reese Witherspoon Hello Sunshine Book Club. And like I said before, I'm trying to read all her books this year. I'm going to link the first video that I did in the description. And I'm also doing this in collaboration with Natalie from One Sleepy Reader. She was the one who inspired me to even start trying the books on this book club because they all sound very interesting and the way she talks about it made me very interested in reading them. So we're buddy reading the books every month and talking about them. And she's also posting a video on the same day as me talking about this book and other books as well. So it's great for you to check out a different perspective from mine. And I'm going to leave her link down below also, so do check her channel out. She also reads the books from previous years and tries to give a review from the book of the month and a previous book. So it's very interesting to see what are all the books that are picked for this book club. So I really recommend it. Let's talk about Sandkeeper. This book tells the story of Emmeline, a little girl who was raised on an island with her father. That's all she knew when she was a child, just the island the fairy tales that her father would read to her, and that's pretty much it. She didn't have any contact with anyone else growing up, and all that she knew was that her father in the cabin where they lived, he had walls filled with little drawers, and each drawer had a bottle with a strip of paper inside that had a different scent. She was always very curious about those scents. She grew up trusting her nose to guide her and to tell her where to go and where to find food and where to explore more on the island. But she was also curious about some of those scents because there were things in there that she had never smelled before and she just wanted to see where it came from. So in this book, we met Emmeline as a child and throughout the whole book, we see her grow up. We see her in her teenage years. We, sh we see her becoming a young woman and her development and all that is very clear. You can see the little things that made her changed her mind and made her change the way she behaved because she was growing up and because things were happening around her. Although I will say to me that sometimes her behavior seemed a little bit inconsistent, that she was either, either too naive or too smart for her experience in life. And then we have Emmeline's father. He, it's really clear that he loves her really much and that he wants the best for her even though we as a reader might not agree with what the best is for a child. Uh, for me, he was obviously very selfish, just taking his daughter to a secluded island and not exposing her to what's happening in the world. And it's not a spoiler. It says here on the, on the synopsis, but she will get out, out of the island. Otherwise, there wouldn't even be a story to tell. So when she gets out of the island, she's not really prepared for everything that happens in the real world because her father just kept her in that island. A third character that we have here in the story that's very important is Fisher. He's the love interest, but he's much more than that. He has a very complicated past. He has struggles in his family. He becomes friends with Emmeline from the very beginning and he's very loyal to her. I read on Goodreads a comment from the author saying that her initial plan of this book was to tell these three stories, so Emmeline, her father, and Fisher. And after I read that, it kind of made sense in my mind why the story felt a little bit disconnected. Uh, but I'm going to go into that a little bit further. This book is split in three parts. So the first part is Emmeline on the island with her father surviving, learning everything about nature, everything about the smells of nature, her curiosity with the sandpapers, all the fairy tales that he used to read to her. And part two of the book, she gets out of the island. I'm not going to tell you why what happened there but here in this part is where we meet fisher and other characters that are outside the island there are a lot of characters here that help her a lot that i really love to see that relationship from these people with her there's also dodge it's a dog that she's she gets a different relationship with the dog as well because of the sense of smell it's also very important for the dog and in part three of the book i'm not going to go into spoilers but she's a little bit older and she's trying to just figure out all the mysteries that are happening in her life. I will say that the setting where this book takes place is absolutely gorgeous. I could picture everything in my mind, the way she describes the island and 
the other place where she goes to live after that and that whole nature and the ocean is amazing and i just wanted to go there and spend like a couple of weeks <laughs> this is just a gorgeous gorgeous scenery so what happened in this book for me it doesn't have necessarily a very clear plot it's more of a coming of age story of Emmeline, and I really didn't see an issue with that. I really enjoyed getting lost in that setting, especially, and learning the different mysteries about the sandpapers. But there were a lot of things here that, like I said, felt very disconnected. When we meet Fisher, we start learning a lot about him, and some things just, for me, they were forgotten on the story that seemed very important in the beginning, and then it was never mentioned again in the book. It felt to me that she was trying to tell three stories in a very short book. And I needed more time for this to expand and just to connect one thing to the other. I really love the relationship that she has with Fisher. It's just so pure and so amazing. And you just can really see it growing. So that was a very positive in this book for me. I love the sandpapers and all the whole curiosity that she had about it and what happened with all of that in the story, I'm not going to tell you. But I think that it made a lot of sense. It was at one point in her life, she was like 12, 13 years old, and she was just figuring things out. And she was behaving, for me at least, it looked exactly like a 12-year-old, a 13-year-old would behave in that situation. So it felt very real to me. But then part two, although I love Fisher and I would love to know more about his life, I felt like a lot of the island was just forgotten. And a lot of what she went through and the things that happened to her in the island just weren't brought back again. And then we have more characters in part three and everything does look like it's going to be completed in the sense that the story is now all connected. But for me, it didn't. It just felt like it was just a new branch that we're going to in the story. And everything's just going all over the place. And it's not necessarily making sense why we're going so many different places. So a lot of the questions, a lot of the mysteries here were answered, but I felt like some of them weren't. And some things were not necessarily believable to me. This is a little bit of a magical realism. It has aspects of magical realism in it. But that's not even what I thought. It wasn't believable. It's just the way the world acted about the things that were happening, like a father taking her child away to an island and everyone just pretty, pretty much forgets about it. I don't know. There were a few things that, that still needed answers in the end and we didn't get those answers. And the ending of the book, I saw when, when it was starting to wrap up, like the last page of the book, I saw an opportunity for something to just come completely full circle and be perfect on the way it ended. If you read the book, just tell me in the comments and I'll tell you what I'm talking about. But I saw an opportunity, I'm like, this is genius. And then that didn't happen. And actually the ending just was so sudden that I thought I had more pages to read still, but it was already the acknowledgements. It was, it, the, the last pages of the book didn't make sense to me. Like it, it, it's, it's missing something. I, I, I still feel like I need to read the end of the book because I don't think I got it. <laughs> so those are my thoughts on The Sand Keeper. I hope you give it a chance if it's something that sparks your interest. And I know that Natalie enjoyed it more than me. She has a different perspective on the things that she liked and that were more important to her than what the things that were important to me in this book. So if it seems interesting to you, check her review because might, you might want to read it even more. But I do recommend it if you just want to get lost in this gorgeous setting. And if you like coming of age stories with mysterious past and a little bit of whimsy in it. If you do read it, let me know if you have the same feelings that I did about the disconnection of this book. I think I rated three stars on Goodreads and it was very easy for this to be a little bit more if we had a bigger context on why and how everything was happening to get to where we got in the end. I hope you enjoyed this review and I hope if you give this book a try, let me know in the comments. And remember to like this video and to subscribe to my channel because my plan is to keep talking about the Reese Witherspoon's books uh, throughout 2020 and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So I really hope you are as well. Thank you so much for joining me. 
बाय